Hello and welcome to this video on error handling in Excel VBA. Now this series of videos is based on a blog post that I wrote a few years ago and you'll find it on my website. So you can see it here on the screen and I'll leave a link in the description. You can also generally find it if you Google VBA error handling, it should be pretty near the top. So what we're going to look at in this first video is the three types of errors in VBA. Because most people just see errors in VBA and they don't realize that there's actually three quite different types. So I'm going to be explaining in this video what each of the types are and how we handle them. So let's start off by looking at some code. So this is very simple code here. We're just declaring a variable as a long integer. So we're just saying this variable is going to be a long integer. Now if we leave out syntax such as we forget the as and then we press enter you'll see that we got an error here and the error says expected end of statement. Now this is actually a syntax error. Even though it says compile error there, it's actually a syntax error. We can tell them because the line goes red and because it basically has to do with the syntax of one line. So we can click OK. Now, if we put in the as and leave out the long, then hit enter again, you can see that we get another error. And again, this is a syntax error, expected new or type name. Now the errors are very formal because this was the way things were done back in the 90s when VB was kind of invented. And you can, if, if you look at them first, you might think they're complicated, but if you kind of look at them closer, they're giving you kind of a general idea of the problem. So this is basically saying we should have a type name or we should have the keyword new. Now the same goes, syntax errors are basically any time we basically write out something and the syntax is wrong. So a for loop should be something like this. It should be for i equals one to 10. So if we leave out something like, if we leave out the i, for example, and then we go down, it says expected variable. And you can see in this case that it actually highlighted the problem. It's basically saying after the for where that equals is, we should have a variable. Now, if we put in the i and then we delete the equals, you can see that it says expected equals. So a lot of the time it's quite obvious what the problem is with the syntax, if, if you know the syntax well. Now, if you've been using VBA kind of a lot, you get tired of these syntax, you get tired of the syntax errors being reported like this because you have to click OK every time the box comes up. So what you can do is you can do tools, options, and you can turn off auto syntax check. Now, the beauty of this is that even if there's still an error, so for example, let's put the equals back, it's OK. Now we delete the equals. If there's still an error, it turns red so that you know that there's an error. So these are basically syntax errors. Now the second type of error I like to call compile errors. So these are errors that happen. They're not, the syntax is fine, but they happen over more than one line. So for example, if we have a for statement, the for statement here is fine, but we've actually forgot the next. So every for statement must end with a next so that we, we have code in between, and the next statement is basically telling us where that block of code ends. So if we leave out the next, and we do a debug compile, so this finds our compilers, you can see that it says far without the next. Now it's highlighted the end sub because it's reached there looking for the next. Now the same thing goes with all kinds of VBA lines like an if statement, if we say if one, then, and we leave out the end if, you can see that it says block if without end if. So any of these kind of statements that start and end a section, if they're missing, VBA will let us know. Now another thing is if we try and call a sub, so say we call a sub like do something, and if that sub doesn't exist, we do a debug compile, VBA will say super function not defined. Now often what happens is we can have the sub or the function like this and then we come along and we change it and then we do debug compile and VBA says sober function not, not defined. So this is a compile error. Now I've shown in another video that if we actually run the code through here, so we'll actually go and run the code, it still finds the compile error. So this, is, this can be a bit confusing because you might think, well, this is a runtime error. But the code isn't actually really running at this point. So 
what it's actually doing is basically just checking each module or each sub that it comes into for compile errors and then it tries to run so the best thing to always do is use debug compile and the reason that we do that is because running only finds compile errors that it actually comes across if there's a, a compile error in a different sub then running won't find it so for example imagine we put a an error in here we'll say um let's actually say where we forgot to declare the variable so for i equals we'll say a actually just to make it more clear for a equals one two ten and we say next a now if we do a debug compile it tells us the variable has not been defined so a has not been defined but if we don't run that sub if we only run the show errors sub and let's pretend we don't call this one it will actually run like so we'll step through it it actually runs and so on and then we run it to the end and it doesn't come across that error so that's why we use debug compile because debug compile will find all the errors in our code so let's do it again debug compile and you can see that it found variable not defined okay so now we're looking at the third type of error and the third type of error that we have is a runtime error now the difference between the runtime errors and the other two is that the runtime errors only happen when our application is running so an example of this is the type mismatch and this is the easiest way to understand it is to see it happening so normally in this sub what we're doing is we're just basically reading the value from a1 you can see that the value in a1 is 99 so let's step through the code we step down through the code we read in the value into our long integer and everything is fine we look we can just place the cursor over the variable and you can see it's the value 99 so everything is good and our sub ends so there's nothing wrong with this code but the problem is is that if someone comes along and changes the value to a string for example and then we go back and we try to run our code so i'm just going to run straight through the code you can see that we got a type mismatch error so you can see the difference between the runtime errors and the other errors are that the runtime errors are actually caused by something external to our code now a second example is we're reading a file and what happens in real life when you read files is that the names can change all the time someone can change the folder and so on now in this case we run the code this file doesn't exist by the way and you can see couldn't find and the name of the file is it possible it was removed so again this is another runtime error and the reason that it's runtime is because it's external and it only happens when the code is running now when a runtime error happens if you want to fix it you just press debug so just click on the debug button and it will stop on the line with the error and then you can investigate and see what the problem is so when we when we talk about runtime errors we've got two types of errors we've got expected errors and unexpected errors so you could say that the read file is that when we want going to read a file it's an expected error so an expected error is an error that we've written code to handle and an unexpected error is where we haven't written code to handle that specific error and this is where the error handling code comes in so when you see on error go to that code is for errors that we're not expecting so in the case here what we're actually going to do is we'd say something like if there so there checks actually if the file name is valid so if the file name and we'll just say equals then it's an error and we'd have like a message box and we'd say error uh, please check the file and then we might exit the sub and then we'd end if so we'd exit the sub or something like this so let's run this code and it says error please check the file now the beauty of this code is that because we can we, we're doing we're handling the error we can make the message specific to our application and we and the reason that it's really good as well is that if we make the the we, if we really specify what the problem is it means if we if someone comes along and changes the folder and we come back and run our code and there's a problem it'll tell us exactly what we have to do to fix it basically just ensure that we have the correct file name now in the case of the type mismatch we mightn't want to 
basically check for each cell. Now we can put something in to do, but there's no really easy way to be checking each cell as it would slow the code down. We just expect that it will work. And so in the case where it doesn't work, what we, what we use is the error handling code, which is on error go to. And so if an error happens, this will throw the error. So just give you an example of this, and we'll be going through it more in later videos. So on error go to eh, and then eh is our error handler, and we have message box, and we'll just put out the description. Or that should be error. I just put out the description. And then if everything is okay, we just basically go to exit sub. So if everything is okay, we can call this one done. We're just going to exit the sub. But if there's an error, it will actually jump to here. So let's step through the code. And this should be, let me just put in the colon here. So let's step through the code. And it's going to do this one. This gives us a runtime error. And you can see it jumped down to the error handler. And we put out the error and it's type mismatch. So you can see the, the two things here. In the read file, we're expecting that error could happen at some stage and we're writing code specifically for it. In the case of the type mismatch, we don't expect that an error is going to happen. It should run all the time. So if on the off chance there is an error, we put in some error handling code to deal with it. And in the further videos in this series, I'm going to be looking at the error handling code and showing you what exactly we can do. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you would like to get notified when my new videos are published, then please click on the subscribe button and then click on the bell icon beside it. Now, if you'd like some more free Excel VBA resources, then check out my website, excelmacromastery.com. There are major articles on all the major areas of Excel VBA. Each article has an easy to navigate table of contents, as well as a quick guide that allows you to easily find the syntax you need. And there's tons of coding examples that you can copy and use in your own macros. You'll also find techniques that are not available anywhere else. I also have a VBA tutorial and in this tutorial there's lots of activities and solutions so that you can try them all for yourself and it's all absolutely free. So that's all for me and I hope to see you on my next video.